Okay, here's a nice uh, related type problem that often pops up in quality control. How many jugs in what's our you know do we need to sample? Uh, how many of those milk jugs do we need to take a look at? If we want the sample mean x bar to be within some amount, um, let's call it e, um, within e units of the actual mean. Well, so here's how we can do that. I want to find the, the uh, what's the, the probability that x bar, our sample mean, is uh, within e units of the actual mean, right? Like this. I want to set that equal to, um, oh, some probability, actually. We want the sample mean to be within e units of the actual mean mu with a certain probability. Uh, there's no way to guarantee that. Uh, let's say with probability 95%. Okay. Yeah, so... There. So that's yeah. So that's what we want, and um, so basically, I want to solve for n. I want to solve for the subscript in here. All right. Well, so let's see. Um, how can we solve this? Well, okay. So I think what we can do here then is, um, my, anyway, my reaction to this is, is holy smokes. Uh, <laughs> I think what we could do is um, standardize everything. Um, it's a good way to go here. So this, uh, all this stuff is equal to, all this stuff is equal to, um, it's the chance that I'm going to, at each part of this inequality, I'm going to subtract the actual mean for this thing, and then also divide by the standard deviation for this thing, effectively standardizing this, okay? So mu minus e uh, less or equal to x bar uh, less or equal to mu plus e, okay? I'm going to write it like that. So again, so I'm going to subtract the mean for x bar everywhere, and then divide by the standard deviation for x bar everywhere, which is sigma over root n, sigma over root n, sigma over root n, like that. Okay, now all of this stuff, I know that this stuff behaves like a standard normal, okay? Behaves like a standard normal. So I can just replace all that stuff with a standard normal. The first, mu minus mu, zero. So this is just um, negative e uh, times root n over sigma, right? It's less or equal to z, it's less or equal to e times root n over sigma. Okay? Now, so look at what we have here. Um, uh, I have a, I want to know the chance that uh, the standard normal falls between these two marks. And in our case, you know, I'm, I'm given this E number, um, uh, or, or we would be in the problem, okay? Uh, maybe it's like a tenth of an ounce or a hundredth of an ounce or whatever. And the standard deviation I know from the problem, remember, we're trying to find N all of this stuff is equal to 0.95, okay? I'm trying to find n. Well, so at this point, I'm going to draw a picture. This is sort of what the standard normal density looks like. It's centered at 0 and has standard deviation 1. Now, um, what what this expression says, that it, you know, what, what all this stuff... Um, uh, What, what that stuff says is that basically, you know, I'm, I'm looking for uh, this mark, and say, you know, and that mark is there. The chance that a standard normal falls between these two marks is 95%. Okay? Uh, so what is that mark? Um, hmm. Well, uh, so basically this is... You know, if this is 95% in here, then I know that off to the left and right I have 2.5%. 
Okay, so this mark, this mark right there, that mark, that mark is the 97 and a half of the percentile for a standard normal. Okay, 97 and a half percent uh, because 95 percent plus two and a half percent, right? All of this, all of that stuff, all the way to the left, that's 97 and a half percent. So, and I can get that by doing this function in my calculator, INV norm of 0.975. And I'm, you know, I might put in the mean and that the standard deviation is one. And um, that's there in that distribution menu there. It's uh, so second distribution, INV norm, okay? 0.975. Zero comma one. Okay. Okay, it's about one point nine six. Uh, turns out ninety five percent is a pretty standard probability for these types of problems. So I'm just going to memorize that, and then I'll never have to compute it again. So this is one point nine six. Okay. So all of this says that. Um, well, what, what that says is, I guess this arrow says that. This is 1.96, okay, so solve for n. So 1.96 equals e times root n over sigma, okay. And so that implies, implies that uh, root n is 1.96 times sigma over e, which implies, if I square, if I square that, uh, square both sides, I get, um, 1.96 sigma squared, oops, square, square, ah, ugh, n equals 1.96 times sigma squared over, sorry, did it again, I'm going to square everything, there we go, oh, good, okay, uh, one last thing before we um, carry this out, um, note that uh, n may or may not be an integer in this case, uh, but it needs to be because you t can't take uh, five and a half jugs for your sample. That just doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to use the I'm going to slap the ceiling function on that to um, make it uh, the next greatest integer if it's not already an integer already already right. So um, so f for example, um, uh, if uh, if we want you know if we want the sample mean to be within a um, hundredth of a gallon, then uh, the minimum, uh, the minimum required sample size is going to be 1.96. What was our standard deviation there? 0.02. And E is 0.01, square that whole thing, 1.96 times 2, all right, square that, I get 15.3664, you need to round that guy up, 16.